is a tiny house. Can you see it? It's right there below beautiful Pikes Peak in Colorado. It's the view my mom had for the last year of her life living in the tiny eco house on wheels that she designed and built, and she absolutely loved it. Since I was little, she talked about building a gypsy cart that would take her around the world on adventures, and starting with a tumbleweed tiny house workshop in 2011, she pooled her resources and all of her savings and took the plunge to build Jurtle, the gypsy turtle. <laughs> she was a classically trained pianist, who wanted to live in harmony with the earth and all the people on it, so she installed solar panels, radiant heat floors, a composting toilet, room for six to sleep, and a place for her keyboard to stand to realize her vision. But it's a lot harder to build than dream. She not only had to downsize and learn to use the composting toilet, uh, a series of complications from weather delays, wrong parts, shady contractors, and burglaries kept getting in the way. But with hard work and help from friends, in late 2012, Jurtle stood 13 and a half feet tall on a 28-foot flatbed trailer. Trailers are a great workaround for strict city and uh, building and zoning codes, which is why you see so many THO dubs or tiny homes on wheels. But avoiding those codes meant my mom had to be careful. She had used all her savings building Jurtle, and it's notoriously hard to insure tiny homes and very risky to live in them. In June 2013, the Black Forest Fire broke out a quarter mile from my mom's house, and emergency crews blocked the road out. She hiked in illegally every day to wet the ground around it. Okay, so it was a miracle that Dirtle survived, but a huge wake-up call to the true risks of living small. My mom got back to her life, tweaking systems, hosting friends, and planning trips. But in December 2013, she succumbed to late-stage pancreatic cancer. <laughs> and with my grief, I was left a tiny house built on big dreams. So it was my turn to dream. It didn't feel right to sell Jurtle. Um, she was still tweaking the systems when she died, and ultimately, she always had bigger dreams for her tiny house. So I started my own research. The idea of living small and in sync with nature's systems is not new. The Uros tribe in Peru and Bolivia still live on small islands made from living reeds they use to build homes, boats, outhouses, and even the ground they walk on. Intentional communities embrace the idea. Dancing Rabbit Eco Village hosts the Gob Cobatron by Brian Ziggy Liliola, which is made from cob, a combination of subsoil, straw, and water. Basically mud, but beautiful mud nonetheless. Um, high schools use tiny homes to teach construction, and these examples of student housing from the Netherlands, California, and right here in Arizona prove tiny design teaches innovation, cooperation, and intentionality around how we live and where. Tiny living's been dismissed as a joke, a novelty, only suitable for vacations. People ask, how can it be realistic when building codes don't consider structures inhabitable if a bedroom's under 120 square feet, the size of some small houses? But it is realistic. I mean, my mom did it, and so did the family who founded Story Coffee Company in Colorado, which itself operates out of a THO dub, so their profits can go to getting ethically sourced quality coffee rather than paying higher rents. Square One Villages in Oregon, Coyote Village in Washington State, and Community First in Texas all provide tiny homes to the uh, homeless. With 17,500 homeless people in Maricopa County alone, I can really get behind this idea. Phoenix kind of gets it. The containers on Grand offer eight units made from repurposed shipping containers, and Roosevelt Rose Hotbox Gallery is a shipping container. There's even micro apartments planned for downtown, but they're expensive. Phoenix has a problem with vacant lots, a growing demand to do something with this land and still provide affordable, sustainable solutions for a growing population has spurred several city initiatives that are thinking big, but starting small. Downtown Phoenix, Inc. opened the space between at First and Fillmore Streets on a vacant lot last year. Responding to a city initiative begging the community to fill this space with urban farms, public art, and innovative seating. Spearheaded by Meg, Mayor Greg Stanton, Phoenix Renews is a massive lot reactivation on Central Avenue Indian School that offers community gardening plots, um, public art, and a model solar-powered home. Now, it teaches sustainability, lessens criminal recidivism, and rejuvenates otherwise dormant space. So in looking at the problems and opportunities in Phoenix and around the world, I can't help but imagine what tiny houses like my mom's could do for cities today. I know that she saw it, so today I invite you to join us. Dream big, think tiny. Thank you.